What's up, guys? Matt Brown here for the lines.com, playpicks.com. Going to talk to you about Thursday night football between the Patriots and the Rams. If there's a little excitement in my voice, it's a game that on paper, paper anyway, Thursday for Thursday night football should be pretty good. As always, go ahead and hit that subscribe button here on the channel, guys. Appreciate all the support. We're growing, and it's all because of you. Appreciate it. Um, go ahead and give a thumbs up on this video, and then let us know in the comment section how you are going to play this game. Full written breakdown over here at thelines.com in a game in which this line continues to fall. We are looking now, as of this recording, Rams at four and a half. This thing was five and a half. We see this total falling, 45 and a half down to 44. Over here at FanDuel, 40, 40, uh, four and a half, 44. And then over here at MGM, we we're at four and a half already at 43 and a half. So money coming in on the under in this thing. And money coming in on the Patriots, taking the points at five and a half and at five to get this thing down to four and a half. I'll go ahead and scroll a little bit here so you can take a look at what you uh, what we've got going on over here at the lines as far as the preview goes. But guys, look, uh, Patriots, no, no injuries really at all for the Rams. Uh, people worried about Cam Akers, no big deal there. So he is good to go. And then we're... We were looking at uh, the Patriots, and of course, as they always do, they left, listed 14 players as questionable. So, 14 different guys listed as questionable for the Patriots. Bill Belichick doing Bill Belichick things when it comes to injury report. So, what are we looking at here as far as these matchups? And I think what we're really trying to break down here is, is there any sort of way that this New England offense can have success against this Rams defense? Because look... Rams offense, not incredibly dynamic, not the greatest offense in the world, don't get me wrong, but they're going to be able to move the ball and they're going to be able to score on this Patriots defense. Now, what Sean McVay has done with this uh, offense for the Rams is he has now transitioned to where we're going to get the ball out of Jared Goff's hands fast. We're not going to let him t take sacks. We're not going to let him get hit. We're not going to let him get rattled. We're not going to let him give, get a, an opportunity to make a mistake. And with that, Jared Goff threw nearly 30 passes last week, either behind the line of from either behind the line of scrimmage or only up to 10 yards down the field. 13 of which were behind the line of scrimmage, 25 of uh 25, there was, you know, something 25 or something like that in, in zero to 10 yards down the field. So nearly 30, uh, I should say, nearly 40 passes, I should say completions were what I was looking at. But it's unbelievable. He didn't even attempt to pass 20 or, 20, more, 20 or more yards down the field. Didn't even attempt one. So what McVay has done is said, hey, look, you're not good at that. You hold the ball for too long. You get strip sacks. You throw picks whenever you get pressured, whenever you get flustered back there, you get hit too much. So we're just going to take that out of the equation. Lots of quick passes to Cooper Cup. Lots of quick passes to Robert Woods. Let them do yards after the catch. He's getting the tight ends involved a whole lot more. But what does the Patriots offense do against this Rams defense? This Rams defense, I might add, number five overall DVOA. Number four against the pass DVOA. Number nine against the run DVOA. Pro Football Focus agrees. The number three overall defense, according to Pro Football Focus, number three pass defense, the number 11 Run defense. What did we see last week from the Patriots? Yeah, it was a 45 to nothing beatdown of that Chargers team. There was a punt. Listen, you had to dig in deeper into that box score. Special team stuff that was going on, short field stuff that was going on also. You dig in and you see that Cam Newton did not eclipse 80 yards passing in that game. They do not pass the ball very well at all. Now, look, that's not, Cam's, that's not necessarily Cam's fault. He has been inaccurate, don't get me wrong. But that's not necessarily his fault. There's not a lot of people to throw to. There's not a lot of weapons on that team. So here's the thing. You think, okay, well, they'll just run the ball. If we look here, yeah, their offense overall, the, the Patriots, DVOA is 23rd. Pass offense, 27th. But their rush offense is 4th overall DVOA. Rush offense is 3rd overall by pro football focus. If you look at their adjusted line yards, they're second overall. Yards per rush, they're ninth overall. So, I mean, the, the run offense is where this thing is, is, is really working right now. 
But if you're the Rams, this is what you have in your back pocket. Not only do you have Jalen Ramsey, who, as we know, is an incredible stud at corner, but you have Darius Williams as well, the number four overall rated cornerback, according to Pro Football Focus. So if you're the Rams, again, I don't know. I don't know how they're going to go about this, how I would go about this, and I imagine they're pretty sharp as well. You've got Jalen Ramsey who can match up with Jacoby Myers all day long. You got Darius Williams who could also match up with Jacoby Myers all day long. If it's not Ramsey on Jacoby Myers, it's Darius Williams on Jacoby Myers, whatever it might be, most likely Jalen Ramsey is the shadow corner. And then you have another stud corner on the other side of the field that, by the way, who, for Demir Bird? For Nikhil Harry? How are they moving the ball? So if you're the Rams, you basically just sell out stopping the run. You have your stud corners man up. They might get beat one time over the course of the game. It's hard to ask a guy to go man coverage all the time, you know, and 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 win every single time. But they'll take that trade off. They get beat one for they get beat one time for a deep ball throughout the course of the game. But then they sell out to keep the run so that the Patriots can't just sit there and just chip, 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 chip the ball down the field running the ball. And I feel that's what the Rams are going to do in this game. They're going to sell out to stop the run. They're going to rely on their stud corners to be able to lock down what are, you know, look, they're fine, but they're B-level receivers here for this Patriots team. Um, you look at the offense of the Rams, and, and listen, it's – it's weird you don't think about this Rams team being a powerhouse run team, but listen, as far as success rate and how they've been going about things and how they've been doing, uh, how they've been kind of, you know, the foundation of this team, the run game's been pretty successful, which has helped on the short pass game and things like that. Uh, the offensive DVOA is fourth overall, pass offense 11th, number one rush offense DVOA in the league. PFF kind of agrees. Number eight overall offense, number six overall rush offense. And because they've been getting the ball out of Jared Goff's hands so quickly, their adjusted sack rate is only second in the league. So this is the giant adjustment that they have made. Second best in the league, their adjusted sack rate. Pressure allowed is seventh best in the league. Because they're getting it out of his hands really quickly, Sean McVay has made that decision that we're not going to let Jared Goff lose the game for us. We're not going to let him sit back there and hold the ball and make mistakes. And so... They have adjusted. It's not because the line has been playing so incredibly well. I mean, they lost Andrew Whitworth, one of the best offensive linemen in the league. But if they adjusted their game plan and how they go about the attack, and that's why they're sitting where they did. Their early down success rate has actually been much, much better as well. Fifth overall in the league. So you're moving the ball in early downs, which continues to take pressure off of a guy like Jared Goff. That's what I keep saying. Basically, keep the pressure off of him, and everything should work in this uh, in this offense here. And um, that's actually what I expect that they're going to do. So, what we've got over here, guys? Let's take a look at some of these player props because I actually do like some player props tonight. And we'll uh, go ahead and go ahead and tee it up at all the different sports books here as to uh, as to the player props and how we might go and attack these things. First and foremost, let's go ahead and click down here. We'll go look at the uh, at the passing yards. Look, nothing. I don't have any play on this one because look, golf seems a little hefty at two seventy. You can see it's already juiced right here. But I mean, we could go over and probably find a different number. I mean, here's two sixty three. It's less juiced if you wanted the under there, and it's all the way down at two sixty over here. Um. You know, I expect the Rams to be playing from ahead in this game, so I do expect a little bit more running than than they're used to. Um, but they could get that lead by them having such success passing the ball, which is why I am actually not going to play uh, golf passing yards here because he might get to a 260, 270, 280-ish before they decide that they're just going to start run, 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 run. So uh, nothing for me on that the only one would be listen it's an under pass for me on newton i don't expect him to have a ton of success you can see the under over here in DraftKings already juiced incredibly low on uh, incredibly high here on the 185 so 
134 is the juice on 185. You can get 180 over here at 110 on both sides. Get 181 over here on 110 both sides. So it's only four yards passing, and it's, and it's far, far less juice if you wanted to go uh, that route with everything. But there are a couple that I am looking at. And first and foremost, well, we can see the rushing yards for Cam Akers has been pulled down over here at DraftKings. But um, I am looking at Cam Akers' rushing yards in this one. Now, not listed over here at FanDuel either, but at MGM, he is at least listed. Um, I like the over. Now, that's juiced to 140 over here. Here's the deal. Cam Akers was... Uh, he has pretty much taken over the lead role in this backfield now. And not only that, um, but he wasn't even listed on the final injury report. That was another thing. Maybe that's the reason why it's not up the other two books because um, he was listed as, as questionable two days ago. But when the final injury report came out yesterday, he was not listed at all. And so I expect him to be the lead back in this game. And I expect him to be the lead back for the Rams in this situation. So uh, I like the over at 45 and a half on Cam Akers yardage. And I like that a pretty good bit. Um, the other one that I like here, and listen, if we're playing from behind, right? We're playing from behind in the situation is what I feel is going to happen for this Patriots team. That's why I'm on the over. Oh boy, this thing got juiced to hell since I, since I bet it. Um, James White over two and a half receptions, minus 200 now uh, over here at DraftKings. Maybe we can find... Uh, Maybe we can find another line over here. James White, total receptions. Uh, so it's at three and a half over here at FanDuel. And then we have him at two and a half, but it's only 165 over here. So really it depends on how you want to go about this, what kind of risk tolerance you have. Um, two and a half minus 165, or I don't even hate the over here at plus money at FanDuel on James White. Again, I expect this uh, Patriots team to be playing from behind. I expect them to have to give up on the run at some point, late third quarter, very early fourth fourth quarter. And I don't expect a ton of success out of these wide receivers against these uh, against these corners. And so, what does that what does that do? That pulls Damian Harris off the field. It puts James White on the field and gives Cam another rece receiving option. And um, I actually like James White to get, you know, a handful of receptions in this game. I really liked the two and a half when this opened over here, um, which is why it's juiced all the way. Something crazy now. You can still get the two and a half at 165 over here. Um, still pretty heavily juiced, but um, you do get it at 165 over here. But even at plus money over here, I kind of like the, the three and a half at plus money, even on James White. Again, it all is fitting the narrative of how I feel like this game is going to go you know, is is Rams get ahead, start running the ball, Cam Akers gets his yards, Pat Patrick's, uh, Patriots playing from behind, James White comes on the field, gets a bunch of dump-off catches um, as they try to move the ball down the field. So really like those two props, a pretty good amount. If I get on anything else, I'll be sure and leave it in the comment section below. Um, as far as the total goes, look, I don't expect a ton of points, but this thing is falling now out of range for me to play it at 45 and a half. It could have been an underplay, but now this thing's falling a full point and a half. Hell it's fell. It's fallen two whole points as we mentioned over here at, uh, at bed MGM. So no play on the total for me. I mean, if you're, if you're kind of looking, is there a way do we get to the over now? Does it, has it fallen too far? If you're starting to wonder that, I mean, a way you get to the over here, pretty simple, right? Is, is this Rams offense just kind of does what they do, score in that mid-20s? They have a team total of about 25 in this thing. So if they get their team total maybe a little bit more for you, do they get to 30 points? Do they get to 31? And then if they do, then you know, you're know you not asking very much out of the Patriots at that point at all. What happens is it becomes a dog. If this becomes just a dog fight, uh, super, super low-scoring dog fight, obviously you're never getting there because that's just you know explosive – Plays just don't happen for this Patriots team at all, right? They are not the team that scores quickly. They move the ball down the field very methodically before they score. So, uh, really tough for me to ever play an over in a game like this, but the number, but the total has gotten to a point where I can't play one way or the other. That said, I'm taking the Rams four and a half all day long. I actually took it at five. I didn't think it would get to four and a half, so I have a worse number. Um, Rams four and a half all day long. If you're watching this and later in the day, it's even lower than that. I would play it at five. I'd play it at five and a half if, if it starts heading back the other way in, in the direction of the Rams. 
I'm not worried about it until he gets to six. At six, I would probably back off. Six has become a much more key number here lately, not only for a couple of different reasons. One, they moved the extra point back. Guys seem to be missing a ton more extra points. And two, teams are going for two more often as well. And, of course, if you don't get it, margin of six, um, things like that. So, um, I would play this at four and a half. I'd play it at five. I'd play it at five and a half. If it gets to six, I would back off. wouldn't play it. But love the Rams in this situation. Listen, they are, every advantage is going their way. This defense has been playing, is one of the very best defenses in the league, been playing lights out. They are going to be able to shut down this run game to where they're not just able to run the ball up and down the field. Those corners are going to be able to shut down this pass game and uh, really, really like the Rams here. I think this is a great sell high spot on the Patriots after a 45 to nothing win last week that again, if you look at the box score, if you really dig in, wasn't as impressive as the 45 to nothing leads on. Anytime you shut a team out, it's good. But really dig into that box score and you see a different story as to uh, pretty inefficient offense and some big special teams plays and punt returns and things and all the things like that 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 got that that win, that got that number up to 45 to nothing. So give me those couple player props. Give me this four and a half on the Rams all day long. If it happens to fall lower, I might add on more. Like I said, I think it's good up to five and a half. Six is where I would probably uh, pull the pull it off and, and not go there anymore with them. And again, if there's any more props that ends up in my account, I'll be sure and put them in the uh, in the comment section below. Guys, full written breakdown over here at the line so you can go and see what we uh, have to say over there as well. And of course, if you need a sports book, just click on your state wherever you live and the very best sign-up bonuses you can possibly find are all going to be right here on the page at the lines. And take advantage of that. It's the only time you can ever get over on one of these sports books. Free money, match bets, deposit bonuses, all the things like that. And while you're here, of course, hit that subscribe button. Go ahead and give us a thumbs up on this video. And now, let us know in the comment section what you think the exact score of this game is going to be. It has to be listed out. Rams, 84. Patriots, 79. If you happen to get it exactly right, we'll ship you an Amazon gift card as well. You have to be a subscriber to the channel. You also have to like, have to have liked this video as well, but I uh, already shipped out some of those and it's kind of fun. So uh, get everyone involved here and make this game a little bit more. Another way to gamble on the game, right guys? Another way to gamble on the games. Appreciate all the support for everything here and good luck on all your bets for Thursday Night Football.